Welcome to Artists at Work. I'm Kathleen Harrington, and my guest today is Jim Sens. Jim was just starting to tell me a little bit about how he first developed his interest in painting and drawing. Well, thank you for inviting me here, uh, Kathy. Oh, it's a pleasure to welcome. be here with you. Um, I got started in drawing and painting in high school. And I was very fortunate. I went to Benedictine High School. And okay. in my junior and senior year, I had an instructor by the name Jose Cintron. And he was very passionate about his art. And I think his passion and his inspiration left a mark on me. A good teacher. Oh, an no, excellent teacher. teacher and a heck yeah. of an artist as well. I'm going to look him up. Jose Cintron. Yeah. Cintron, okay. Yeah. But uh, so he truly left an impression with me. Uh, and in high school, I did what high school artists do. You know, we did a lot of drawings and sketches of, mom, since it was a Catholic high school, we did a lot of statues <laughs> and things like that. But uh, I, when I, after I graduated from Benedictine, um, I got a job at White Motor Company. Okay. And at that time, they had probably 4,000 employees and were building 60, 65 trucks a day. Was that here in Cleveland? In Cleveland at 79th okay. and St. Clair. Oh, okay. okay yeah, and yeah. Uh, so I worked for her for 16 years. And the shift I worked was like from 7 a.m. to 3.30. And so I got home at, say, 4 o'clock every day yeah. and had a lot of time to do besides doing house repairs and things that need to be done yeah. around the house. I started doing drawing and painting all over again, so to speak. At, at White Industries, were you a draftsman or were you just doing something totally uh, different? I was, I ended my, I worked there on, on the assembly line. Okay. And I was a, most of the time I was a quality control inspector, making sure the trucks were being built correctly. And uh, a troubleshooter. Sometimes okay. I get a phone call that's, that something's not going right with the right, truck. Right. Helps and I wasn't an engineer, yeah. but I helped the engineers figure out what was going wrong. Because you knew how it all came together. I, I, I worked on the assembly line for a number of years, so I kind of knew how part A fit into part B. I think it's interesting because an assembly line, I think of being very routine. And then you come home and you create. It wasn't routine at okay. White Motor because we built customized trucks. Oh. It, it wasn't like the uh, car assembly line where the right. through. There was nothing boring about working on the assembly line at White Motor Company. Okay. Uh, but I, the, my regret, well, we were let, where you were not allowed to have uh, bring cameras into the shop mm -hmm. for whatever reasons. Right. But you could bring a sketchbook. Ah. So during my lunchtime, I sometimes I'd sit down and do some ske sketches. So Unfortunately, those sketches have long <laughs> been lost. So you were sketching the cars. Or the I people? Was, uh, I, was, I was sketching the, the environment, the okay. machines, uh, oh. the, the trucks, and th things like that, things that would catch my eye. Yes, right. yes. Right. Then when you went home, were then you painting or were you I, sketching? When I, when I got home, I wanted to paint. I had a huge desire to paint. And uh, I first started painting in oils. Okay. And uh, may I show a, you? Oh, a, yeah, I can't wait. Yes, please okay. show me. Um, this is an oil painting I did while I was working at White Motor Company. It's uh, enormous. It's, yeah, it's kind of like Don Getz once said, once said to me after I showed it at the garage, mm -hmm. he came up to me and says, Jim, I admire the fact that you would tackle a project that bid, big. <laughs> it's thir 30 by 60 inches. Wow, that's a mural. It's an oil. <laughs> yeah. And I stretched the canvas. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not really impressed. <laughs> I, I spent an entire summer literally painting this. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, that is amazing. So I can see how the good drawing underneath made this all come together. Yeah. 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 It, 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 you weren't just winging it. This is planned. Exactly. Right? Well, it, it's, it also uh, resembles a, a painting titled uh, The Santa Fe Trail. And I wanted a reference, so this, this was my reference. But yeah, this is an okay. oil that I did, uh, I'm gonna say sometime in the 70s, okay. while I was mm -hmm. working at White Motor Company. And one of the things you'll notice about my artwork, mm -hmm. it tends to lean towards the west. Yeah. Why I, that is, yeah. I'm not sure I can tell you, but one- is this one, what is this one? This is what I call the Marlboro Men. <laughs> um, one thing that always captured me when going through the magazines, you see these manly 
projection of the Marlboro cigarette ads. So I would tear those ads out of the magazines and put them in a big pile. And finally, I made this basically collage-type painting mm -hmm. of the Marlboro men. All out west. And this, in a, this is an acrylic. And again, okay, so you moved to acrylic from oil? I moved from oils to acrylics. Yeah. Um, oils with the linseed oil and the turpentine, be, be yeah. honest, kind of stunk up the house. It does, it does. So I moved to acrylics, and then I eventually moved to watercolors. I did pretty much the same progression, but I went from acrylics to oil, but my oils are the newer water permeable oils, mm -hmm. so you don't mm -hmm. need all those solvents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once I... Uh, well, I left White Motor Company in 1978. They were going out of business. I mean, the writing was on the wall. Okay. okay? And um, I went to work at Kaiser Permanente in 1978. One thing I should tell you, when I was working at um, White Motor, I became involved with the union. I became an insurance representative, which just meant, meant that I worked with Blue Cross and Blue Shield and Kaiser and the other insurance mm -hmm. carriers to make sure the employees were receiving the benefits that were negotiated for them. Okay. And that's why Kaiser hired me. Actually, I was offered a job both by Blue Cross and Kaiser. I chose Kaiser in 1978 and very quickly became uh, their designator labor, labor representative to work with organized labor okay. in the Ohio area, which at that time, unions were right. a big factor. That in turn caused me to do a lot of traveling. So what did you do with your art while you were traveling? Well, it's what I did to my <laughs> art while I was traveling. I'll, ne I'll never forget, Kathy, the first aha moment I had. Mm -hmm. I was in New Orleans at a benefit conference. All three motor companies, GM, Ford, and Chrysler at that time, they had annual benefit conferences okay. where they would bring in their insurance crew and then the carriers. I was a representative of the carrier, so I had, I had to go to the benefit conferences. So I'd get a break, and I didn't, don't no longer have the sketch, but I wanted to go for a ride down to Lake Pontchartrain. Okay. So I'm riding down Lake Pontchartrain, and Kathy, I pull over, and I see this lighthouse. I, I, did, I, ha I pulled out a tablet from my meeting and did the sketch of the, well, I called it the Lake Pontchartrain Lighthouse. Yeah. It's called the New Canal Lighthouse, but it's, to okay. me it's the Lake Pontchartrain Lighthouse. And at that moment, it was an aha moment for me because I so connected to that lighthouse. Okay. Uh, and I found out in subsequent sketching, at, whether it's at car shows or with the urban sketchers, mm -hmm. you become so much more connected with the subject that you're sketching than taking a photograph. Did you bring samples of some of your travel sketches? Oh, would you like to see I some? I would love to see them. All right, well, um, let me say, when I was working for Kaiser, I did a lot of travel. This is the... Um, they tilt it down a little because it's shiny, yeah. This is the uh, Santa Barbara mission in Santa Barbara, okay. California. Uh, whenever I, and I went to California, both Northern and Southern California a lot, I would make time to go visit the Spanish missions that were nearby. So I did a lot of visiting to, to Span this, this is the uh, San Juan Capistrano mission, Be my favorite mission, by the way. I often told my wife, if we've lived in California, she'd know where to find me. <laughs> <laughs> They're beautiful, absolutely. Um, what else have I we got I think a here? big, ooh, my. There's, there's, there, these, these are all five by seven inch watercolor, yeah. watercolor postcards uh, that, like this, I, I remember walk, driving by a ranch and I saw this guy in this kind of pose. I did take a picture of it and when I got back to the hotel, I just did this kind of quick study. I think the lesson in this is if, if, you, if you connect with something and you love that scene or that image, that's what you should be painting. Yes. You can't do a successful picture of something that bores you. Yeah, that's, right? That is, that is, that okay. is true. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah, I love doing these five by seven postcards and I think as, as you know, yes. I plan send them to friends I and family. I am one of the lucky recipients. <laughs> I have them on the wall in my office. Okay. Yes, and then I can't wait now for COVID restrictions to oh. be lifted so I can get new postcards. I'm I can't sure. wait for these to be restricted so I can go to car shows. Car shows. 
Well, here we're back to the car theme from White Industries mm -hmm. and the motors and right. car shows. I, I have to tell you and your viewers, I love going to the car shows. Uh, to yeah. me, it's, it, it's a very enjoyable, but to sit there, and I get in a zone when I'm at the car, at the car shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just kind of like... Your zen moments. I, my right. zen moments is right. Uh, the 50s music is playing in the background, and I hear that, and I see these cars from yesteryear, so to speak. To put forward a and little bit. Yeah, I, uh, look at that. I, I really uh, get excited about, and I, what I'll do is I'll walk through the car show trying yeah. to pitch, pick out a car that I might want to sketch. Uh-huh. And uh, Sketching do that. Sketching at Cruising at Grace? Grace is that Grace, Grace Church? Grace Church, Church. yes. Church, 718, 2018. And then you are, you've labeled it's a 1932 Ford Cabriolet. Love this. Yeah, yeah. I love these. Show us some more of these. Yeah, let me, uh, there, yeah there are some, uh, s s s some doozies in here. This is a, 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 a wide angle. This was at, I think this was at Grace Church as well. And it just so happened, I didn't pose these cars, they just lined up this way. Mm -hmm. All three Model A, Model T Fords. And I said, man, I have got to sketch these. And they, all three of them wouldn't fit on one page. Right, right. So, so I put them on two pages. Put them on two pages. <laughs> I like that. Now okay. these are all older cars. Are you? Did you also sketch some of the newer muscle cars, or is that not? I newer? like the older cars. I like the but older yeah, cars. I'll do a. I do. A, I think I have a, a Mustang in here somewhere. Yeah, I did this Mustang, uh, but uh, it's. I I I truly. If I go to a car yeah. show, and uh, they're playing fifties music. Yeah. And people will come up to me and say, "Oh, you know." Are you an artist? You know? Are you an artist? <laughs> I say, you know, I'm a bricklayer. You know, <laughs> I'm sitting here with all this stuff. <laughs> exactly, but I, I like to uh, do that, and uh, they'll come up to me and ask me uh, that that question. I particularly like the lettering you did there with the Mustang. Though. Okay, it sort of sets the and then look at this Packard. Is that reminiscent of the lettering that was used? No, that it's just that, more that, of the that, error. that that Packard that was at Grace Church as well. That was a museum quality car. Wow. It was really something it's to see. It's beautiful. Yeah. It, I yeah. want to ride in that car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're doing the car shows in the summer, mm -hmm. and you're doing the postcard shows, and I know one of your favorite places to travel was to minor league baseball opening. Oh, yeah, spring, tra spring training. Yeah, this will be the first year yeah. we're not going to sp our, our, our annual spring training vacation. Um, COVID just COVID kind of is ruining it, right? interfere with that. Did yeah. you sketch at the ballparks? Yes, I did. Yes, yes you I did. did. Yeah, and that's kind of a hard sketch to do, I got to say, because it's such an expansive area. You kind yeah. of got to focus in on certain things. Uh, but uh, yeah. And you uh, met players. Oh, uh, if I may share one story please with you. Please when, do. In 2003, when the Indians were still training in um, Winter Haven, Florida. I, we happened to have front row seats thanks to a co-worker of mine in Kaiser, at Kaiser who had season seats and I would buy some of her tickets, game tickets okay. from her. So my 1950s baseball glove that my older brother bought me when I started Little League yeah. is sitting on the railing. Who's coming walking down the railing but Omar Vizquel. <laughs> he spots my glove, picks up my glove, it says, I got to catch some balls with this glove. Oh my Omar Vizquel takes my glove, runs out on the field, and starts t playing catch with Bob Feller. <laughs> That's iconic. I mean, you well, must have been having at least my At least my wife had her wits about her, so she took a picture of that, <clears throat> of Bob Feller and play, playing catch with Omar Vizquel, and Omar's got my mitt. <laughs> we went back in '04. <laughs> I had the picture take, uh, blown up and got both of them to sign it for me. Oh my gosh, yeah. that is a keepsake. Yes, it was. That is a keepsake. Let's talk about yeah, I, all these beautiful paintings you brought. Is uh, Little Richard over there somewhere? Little Richard. Now I'm going to hold this. Hopefully, I have no reflection. Okay. I, I th these are fairly recent. Uh, I kind of got inspired to do paintings of musicians. Okay. So I've done, and these are kind of a little far out, not typical style, but I said, Little Richard, he's hot, you know? 
So I did this one of Little Richard. I've got some of uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and uh, Chuck Berry. And I got a series of jazz musicians that I've painted as well. Um, uh, Lionel Hampton, uh, Charles Novell on, on their various instruments. And I showed these in a bar that's in Parma that's no longer open thanks to COVID. Yeah. But I was fortunate to sell a couple of those paintings in that bar. Are uh, you a musician, a musician yourself? I am. No. I am not a musician. Okay. <laughs> Let's make that I clear. I thought I might uncover I, another uh, hidden talent. No, I'm not a musician at all. <laughs> at all. No, not okay. even close. <laughs> well, this is, I love, I love the color choices you made there, too. Yeah, yeah. That's I, fabulous. I get a lot of nice comments on And then that, the, car, right. the other one is, that this started out. That started what out am as I a, looking at? Oh, cars. Okay. That started out as a sketch um, at a car show. And I actually owned that car. That was the second car I owned wow. um, when I got married. Um, a 56 Chevrolet Tour hardtop, exact replica. The only difference is mine was turquoise and white, and I painted that one as, as red and white. Is this hanging in your home now? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. I, let me share another yeah. painting, if I may. Please. Now you, yeah. Let okay. me see. Oh. S another story. Are you ready for another story? We're back to California, right? Back to California. Okay. This is a painting I did of the San Juan Capistrano Mission. Story behind that is I have a great aunt. I think she's a great aunt of mine. Margaret Burke Polly, who did a very similar painting. In fact, I use that as a reference for this. And uh, that oil painting by her is an oil painting on a tapestry that now hangs in my son, Jim, my oldest son Jim's house in Michigan. Okay. Uh, but th that was kind of like the source of inspiration. So this, this was painting. your your aunt or your great aunt? I believe she, she was my great. Her, her maiden name. Her. Maiden name was the same maiden name as my mother's maiden name. So, and they, the paintings belonged to my mother. Okay. And then they well, came to sure me. Sure. Then, now you have younger artists in your family too. I know. You do. I do know. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do have a, my youngest son, Steve. Right. He, he's a, he's a very accomplished he's artist. Very accomplished. He's a whiskey painter. He's That's a how whiskey, I know him. But he, he's he's a whiskey a painter. Mm -hmm. He's an urban sketcher. And uh, yeah, he, I call him the real artist in the family. He's very good. Yeah. Well, he needs to do the mission also to keep it, you know, generational. I'll pass that on you to him. You tell him I said that. <laughs> okay. Can you say something real quick before I forget about urban sketches? Okay, uh, yeah. People I, may not know what that is. I am a member, uh, I guess, I'm a member of the Cleveland area urban sketchers. Of course, they too have been affected by, by COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, We've gone sketching when the long boats came in, or the tall ships came into town. We went down and did those. We did some sketching on East 4th Street. And it's so much fun to just get out on a beautiful day and, and sketch things like that and uh, kind of let... I think there's an Akron group, too. Oh, uh, probably. So it, how, if someone was interested, how, how would they begin to find where you're all going on any given I day? I think the best, what I would suggest is just go on the web and type in Urban Sketchers, okay. and then you might get several different clubs. You, mean you, right. got, you might get an Urban Sketchers club somewhere in Spain for that matter. You might, if but, you're traveling. Uh, drill, drill down and get it. So then there's no obligation. You just find out where everyone's going to gather. And that's and it's very a very friendly, welcoming group of people. Um, mm -hmm. may, they make you, may, make you feel at home and uh, go to places sometimes you mm -hmm. might not ordinarily have access to either as a okay. sketcher. And, and I think it could be more comfortable for some people to be with a group than to be sitting out on the street by themselves. That's true. That's very, very, very <laughs> Depending true. Depending on the yeah, street. Yeah, yeah. What is this next one you brought me here? Oh, these or this or this? Let's, let's uh, talk about these. Okay. These are kind of small, but now not more story time, okay? I love your stories, um, though. You may not know it, but there's a society here in Greater Cleveland that I belong to, the Western Reserve Postard, Postcard Historical Society, or something like that. Okay. And of course, they haven't met for a year because of COVID. But uh, once a year, the first week in May, mm -hmm. the post office, the post office declares National Postcard Week. And you can create your own postcards and send them to other folks who create their own postcards. I love this. So these are the postcards that I've developed for the past couple of years. Um, 
for National Postcard Week. And I have a printer who prints them up for me. And we mail them. I probably send out about 50 and get about 50 in return in the mail. I love this. So these are the ones you have done. You have sent these, these out. These are our postcards okay. that I have done in the past. Yes, yes. That's this complicated. One, this one. Uh, like, oh, the old-fashioned postcards? The old-fashioned postcard, you know. I love it. And um, this one of the Cincinnati train station and uh, the J611. If you know anything about trains, I don't. you would know that that's a pretty famous engine. Now, another yes. story? Are yes, you, please. Okay, keep one coming. more story. One more story. There's actually a postcard museum outside of Chicago attached to a, uh, uh, a college. Okay. Every other year they would have a contest for designing your own postcards. So in 2013 I entered that competition and didn't win a thing. Yeah. Okay, period, end of story. I entered it and that was it. That happens. It. So I did it yes. ag again in 2015. Yeah. And this postcard of the old prospector uh, one of my, my oldest son, Jim, so calls him seldom seen slim. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, I don't know what place it came in, but it came in in the top 10. Wonderful. And the letter I received from this museum in Chicago said uh, my post, this postcard was chosen over 300 other entries from eight different countries. So that was pretty cool. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I'm going to yeah. look for that. Uh, <laughs> I, for a while, I remember when I was doing a lot of collage work, there was a movement, uh, mail art, where you actually, you, the envelope was actually what you drew. And, yeah. yeah. I never participated yeah. in that, but I, yeah. I did a couple of those. It was fun, you know, mm -hmm. and then you just drop it in the, po in the box and it gets stamped and everything. Yeah. What's this large piece you brought me? Well, this is uh, uh, acrylic painting that I did. In the, a, a number of years ago that uh, I saw a picture of it in a magazine or somewhere and it is mm -hmm. well let me see what I can do with that yeah now there's a there's a story related to that what as of course that? there's a story to every painting right every story every painting I did a it? I did a uh, I, I did another painting of that in watercolors okay on about a seven by ten inch sheet of paper that was the last painting was the last painting I sold in the MD garage before we were forced out oh. of it. And the person, and I never got to meet the person who bought that painting, but the person who bought that painting was, and according to the gal at the garage mm -hmm. that I forget her name right now, uh, sold the painting, told me that the young lady that bought the painting wrote me a letter. Oh, yeah, wow. and she had the letter in her purse, so she gave me the letter. And it was, and she said it was uh, from a Chinese uh, student who, and a bus stopped at the garage. And all these Chinese students got off the bus and went into the garage to see the artwork. And this young girl, yeah. student, who bought my, my smaller version of that, I'm telling you, Kathy wrote me the no most nicest note that, that I I still have it at, of course, to this day. Of course. And, uh, you know, she loves my painting. She's going to hang it in her room and keep it forever. I and love this story. It was, yeah, it was like, wow, yeah. that was so cool. I think people who buy art and make the effort of connecting with the artist or maybe showing you a photo of how they framed it and where they hung it, they have no idea how much that means. Yeah. yeah. It really is. It, uh, it's kind of like, um, I did a painting, this is a couple of years ago, of Yosemite Falls and sold it at the garage. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, as you know, when someone buys your painting, they, we get their name and address yes. so we can send them a thank, thank right. you note or do whatever. Right. right. So I saw that this particular painting of Yosemite Falls was purchased by someone that lived out west. I didn't know exactly how close they were to uh, Yosemite Falls. But hey, I go on Google and here they were probably about 30 miles from Yosemite Falls. Ah. And I just thought, wow, that person that right. was that close liked my interpretation. Right, uh, and brought it back. And, and brought it back. You, know, you mentioned the MD Garage and there might be people who don't remember what that is or never yeah. knew what that was. Um, there was an old gas station in the National Park, Boston Mills and Heinz Hill where they all come together down there and it was called the MD Garage and for 20 years 
local artists staffed it with paintings uh, and hung a brand new show. Brand new show every, every month. month. Yeah. Every mm -hmm. month right, we did yeah. that. So full disclosure, Jim and I were running that for a few years until um, our lease was torn up and we were told they didn't need us. Yeah, that's right. And talking about the MD Garage, uh, I'd be remiss in not saying what an impression uh, Don Getz made on me as an mm -hmm. artist. Don was the founder. Don, Don was the founder and uh, I got to, I knew who Don Getz was and I went to the MD garage uh, and bumped into him and I saw that he was having a watercolor workshop down at Cheap Joe's in, oh. in I forget what year it was, and I told him I had signed up for his class. Mm -hmm. So I'm down in North Carolina a few weeks later at his class. He comes up to me after the class and says, have you ever thought of joining the Crooked River Gang? That's what the artists call themselves. Right, and I, I just kind of, I said, yeah, yeah, but I'm not sure how you do that. Yeah. He says, well, you just show up there, I think on a Tuesday at noon or one o'clock with your artwork, right. ask to see Sally Heston yes. and Ann Kay, yes. and they'll uh, jury your work they'll there. They'll get you, yeah. And they said, You'll yeah, you're, you're now a member of the Crooked River Gang. Well, we are still a loosely formed group. For a year or two, <laughs> we tried to go on and have shows in other locations, and we did, but then COVID put the final nail in that, I think. Yes, but it did. Maybe someday we'll find a new venue and get the band back together. Yeah, they, hey, that'd be great, <laughs> get the band back together. Yeah. Let me show you one other thing I brought. These? These. I know, I didn't forget that. Show everybody um, what you've done here. This is so cool. I retired in 2004, which gave me a little more time on my hands to, to paint, and I decided to make calendars for my family members and a few close friends. And this is the calendar from last year. Um, I'll, I'll attempt. Yeah, so we've got Euclid Beach Park. Euclid Beach Park, and uh, this, the, I, the, un, unwittingly to me, okay, kind of came out somewhat thematic. I've got, uh, I think, three carousel paintings in here. Well, I've, and, and I've got, oh yeah, I've got some. Uh, some wildlife, some birds. Some, and yeah, well, these, I attempt to make these look like uh, Asian paintings, you know. Uh-huh, giant different things. Uh, and there's a carousel. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, but I, I kind of I, do these, uh, like I say, for family and, uh, and some friends. Very cool. Very, very cool. Ooh, very cool. Yes. So. Wow. And there's a few watercolors you haven't shared yet. Oh, I'd be there's more than happy. There's a few more things and then our okay. time is. Yeah. Uh, these are some watercolors I, I did uh, over the years. Some flowers. Oh, the uh, covered bridge. The covered bridge in the Cuyahoga Valley uh, National yes, Park. Yes, we paint a lot of things in the park. Yeah, the, yeah. We well, used to paint a lot yeah. of things in the well, park. Well, I can't wait till summer gets here and this COVID gets relaxed a little bit That's more. That's right. I told my wife, if you can't find me, I'm in the park. I'm in the park <laughs> painting. Yeah. Nice. This is down from, from Florida, uh, Pelican. Okay. Uh, it, it, we were at uh, John's Boardwalk and this Pelican perched right in front of us. I took yep. some pictures and did some quick sketches. And the barn, beautiful and, colors. And a barn. Hold that one up. And I just, I want to thank you for coming today. This is, looks fabulous. It matches your sweater vest. It looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it up. This has been delightful. It's been so good to see you again and to see all the breadth of this work that you've done and how it's all flowed. So thank you for coming, Jim. Well, thank you for inviting me. Yeah.